Good morning and welcome to the 2021 Governor's Awards for Local Government Excellence. I'm Rick Vallello, Deputy Secretary of Community Affairs and Development. With me today is the Executive Director of the Governor Center for Local Government Services, Kim Bracey, and Secretary of the Department of Community and Economic Development, Dennis Davin. Today's program will be recorded and available after formatting on DCD's YouTube channel. So if you wanna share with friends and family and loved ones after the fact, um, please share. Um, this is quite the day after quite the year. Um, and, you know, Kim and I will be sharing co-host duties today's virtual awards. Um, we would prefer to be at the governor's residence you know, all dressed up, rubbing elbows with all of you local elected officials. Um, but unfortunately, the world we live in today, we have to still do this remotely. Um, but what a challenging year it has been. Um, I want to thank, you know, the committee that helped put this program together remotely. Um, believe it or not, these remote events are harder and more challenging to put together and nerve wracking. So I would like to thank Ted Martin, Evelyn Cianelli, uh, Mike Kelly, and Kim Bracey and her team for putting today's event together. Um, you know, it really does start, you know, as soon as we end this, we start thinking about what projects, who in the Commonwealth are doing um, great things and um, paying attention to the good that you all do um, when we are looking out. And then, you know, we look forward to the nominations coming in and evaluating all of the good projects and the nominations that we get from across the Commonwealth. Um, I'd like to thank all of the elected and appointed officials, um, both at the state level and the local level that are joining us. Um, it is important to recognize good work. You know, there's so many negatives in the world. Um, the days that we can recognize, you know, good work and um, careers, it, it really is important. Um, I'd like to, you know, thank all of you for making a difference in your community and would move right now to um, the governor's video. Um, Governor Wolf provided a video for um, today's event and I'll ask Ashley to play the governor's video. Hi, I'm Governor Tom Wolf. I'm proud to work with dedicated local government leaders like you to make life better for Pennsylvanians from all corners of the state, from our biggest cities to our smallest townships and boroughs. It's not easy being charged with leading a community. It's difficult and it can often be thankless, but our neighborhoods depend on their local government leaders to champion their needs and help them grow. The hard work of local government leaders was crucial to helping Pennsylvanians survive during the global pandemic. You work tirelessly every day to protect and support your constituents. So thank you for always putting Pennsylvanians first and thank you for all that you do on behalf of the Commonwealth. Thank you, Governor Wolf. And We'll move into Secretary Dennis Davin's comments. Um, it's been my pleasure to work with Secretary Davin from the beginning of the administration, but especially this past year, you know, when community and economic development was at the forefront of handling and working with local governments, working with economic development and you know, seeing us to where now with vaccinations and things improving, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel 
And it was with Secretary Davin's leadership that both the economic development and community development never missed a beat in this past year. Secretary Davin. Thanks, Rick. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, great, great job to you and to Kim. We really appreciate all the work you and, 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 and Kim and your folks do uh, on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's thankless. It really is. And, and you, you do a great job. So thank you for that. Um, so good morning, every, everyone. And thank, uh, thank you for joining us today at the 2021 Governor's Awards for Local Government Excellence. I am very happy to be here with you today doing this event virtually for the second year in a row. Uh, although I'm sure we all miss, as Rick said, the excitement of doing this in the governor's residence. Uh, but this 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 will be the last virtual event. We're going to do this in the governor's residence next year. But no matter what the format, this is really you know this is one of my favorite events of the year. As Rick Rick mentioned, you know, rubbing elbows with all you folks, it's that's a lot of fun, and and, it, and it's great to to see you uh, uh, get uh, awards like these and and, and to really you know uh, get appreciated for the work that you do. You know, with all the 24-hour news coverage around federal and state governments, a, a lot of uh, you know people don't realize that local government is a level of government that, that most affects their day-to-day -day lives. You're the ones who influence more than anyone else. Uh, policies surrounding our schools, uh, our police, fire, parks, libraries, water, sewer, public work systems, and our public transportation systems, and so much more. And you're constantly working to keep your residents safe and healthy, help your businesses grow, make your communities vibrant and inviting, and generally improve everyone's quality of life. But too often, people take those services for granted, especially when you're doing your job well, which obviously you guys do. You're like the offensive line in football. No one notices when you're playing well and executing all your responsibilities, but they do tend to notice when things go wrong. And I know that can be frustrating, but today we get to hold you up and recognize you for your incredible achievements over the past year, a year that for many of you may have been one of the most challenging of your lifetimes. The pandemic has brought out the best in so many public servants like yourselves uh, who have de dedicated so much of your time and efforts to your residents and businesses. From tackling homelessness to addressing PPE shortages for older adults, to assisting students with access to online education, so much more. These projects have brought critical services and assistance to residents in need across the Commonwealth. And in many cases, they, they position communities for long-term success. And that's exactly what Pennsylvania needed to get through this past year. And now we're at a point as a Commonwealth uh, where we're able to look forward toward long-term recovery. And make no mistake, we have a long road ahead of us that will require all hands on deck to get where we need to be. But today, I encourage you just to take a breath, reflect on your accomplishments. Because Pennsylvania is a large state. We have nearly 13 million people spread across more than 2,500 municipalities. But out of all of those local government entities, you are the ones that are getting recognition today at the 2021 Local Government Awards. And that's an incredible feat. So take this day to give yourself a pat on the back. Thank your teams that helped you accomplish these projects and initiatives, and also support your and other local government colleagues from other parts of the state who are also receiving awards today. After all, this isn't just a chance to get some well-deserved recognition for yourself. It's also a chance for you to take inspiration from the other municipal governments who have achieved so much over the past year as well. And take that inspiration into your day-to-day -day work to improve your community. In the end, that's how a Commonwealth should work. And I know that together, we're gonna to make this Commonwealth a better place to live, work, and play. I wanna thank all of you for your amazing work over the past year and for being here at this virtual event today. I also wanna thank all the local government organizations on the call today as well. You've been essential for assisting Pennsylvania's municipalities throughout the pandemic. And I know that we at the state level value the strong partnerships that we share. That partnership will serve us well in the months and years ahead. And finally, I also want to echo Rick and Kim's recognition of the staff at DCED who planned and organized this entire event. You guys work so hard to make these local government day awards go off without a hitch year in and year out. And please understand and know that we all appreciate the work you put into this. So thank you. And so now without further ado, I'll turn it back over to Kim and Rick for the presentation of the awards. Thank you all again. Thanks, Dennis. Um, I couldn't do what I do without amazing people to work with. Um, before we get into the going into the awards right away, I want to recognize my partner at DCD in helping all of you make a difference. For a few opening comments, Executive Director Kim Bracey. 
totally put on the spot. Good morning, all. Thank you very much, Voss. I appreciate you and the secretary. I enjoy the job that we do every day on behalf of all Pennsylvanians and particularly our local government leaders. This is an exciting day, an exciting time to recognize everyone. And I thank you so very much for the minutes to give a few comments. Thanks, Kim. Um, let's get right into the awards now. First up, the award for building community partnerships. Today, we recognize the All One Foundation under the leadership of John Moses. The Northeast PA Nursing Home SOS program addressed the community need by securing the proper resources that nursing, that nursing homes needed to protect their residents and staff from co contracting COVID-19. Sitting at the epicenter of the crisis, the All One Foundation, under the leadership of Chairman John Moses, worked with Senator Udichak and created a public-private partnership known as the Northeast PA Nursing Home SOS Program. Together, they raised over $1 million and quickly became a national model of efficiency in delivering the personal protection and equipment to over 30 nursing homes in Northeast Pennsylvania. Thanks to this unique public-private partnership, lives were saved by securing PPE to Pennsylvania nursing homes. Congratulations for the Building Community Partnership Award today, the All One Foundation. Awesome. And next we have the Innovative Community Government Initiatives Award. And today we first recognize Plainfield Township in Delaware County. Using CARES Act funding, Plainfield Township installed the Life Air Systems UV Biological Remediation System at a Plainfield Township Municipal Building. Their work reduced the exposure of officials, public employees, law enforcement officers, and municipal building visitors to airborne pathogens. Because of this effort, the township was able to resume normal public service delivery and operations and reduce the use of sick leave or pay time off by public employees. They increased productivity and became, it became a potential template for other public organizations attempting to balance the health threat of COVID-19 while still serving the needs of the public. And also today, we are awarding South Whitehall Township in Lehigh County. The Jordan Creek Greenway is a 14 mile trail that will traverse through four municipalities in Lehigh County. And the product of instrumental development and support from Commissioner Christina Tory Morgan the finished trail will connect Allentown, Whitehall, South Whitehall, North Whitehall, and the Trexler Nature Preserve. The Greenway is a terrific example of multi-municipal planning and coordination to create more pedestrian bike-friendly communities across municipal borders. Congratulations to you both. Over the past year, every community has faced unique and hard challenges. The Responding to Adversity Award recognizes that moment and highlights those that have risen above and beyond and made good in very tough times. Today, we give this award to the Local Government Academy, an independent, nonpartisan organization promoting excellence in local government. The Academy displayed an impressive response to adversity during the COVID 19 pandemic by transitioning their learning experience to a completely digital format. With program focused on in-person learning pre-pandemic, the Academy quickly and successfully pivoted to an online format to allow both for synchronous and asynchronous remote learning experiences. Congratulations, Joy, and the Local Government Academy for your great work. Also being recognized today is Delaware County. Led by its five-member county council, the county was able to rapidly respond to economic shocks of the current coronavirus pandemic and Pennsylvania's mitigation orders by creating Delco Strong Small Business Support Delco Strong Small Business Support Program, first launched in April 2020, without any CARES funding, 
The program provided over 16 million in grants to over 1,500 small businesses and nonprofits and helped to maintain an estimated 5,600 jobs from disappearing throughout 2020. Overall, the, the program prevented the closure of hundreds of businesses who lost much of their revenue because of the pandemic. We congratulate both the local government academy and Delaware County. As former mayors, Rick and I know that fiscal accountability is central to good governments. Today, we first recognize Worcester Township with the Fiscal Accountability and Best Management Practice Award. The township has implemented a, comp a comprehensive program to help support the Worcester's volunteer fire department. This program allows the township to support the volunteer model without the need to establish an expensive full-time paid department. This model is made successful by a variety of income tax credit for volunteers, a monthly stipend for township employees who volunteer to run with the, the Worcester Volunteer Fire Department during the workday, and an in-house Firefighter One certification program, which allows township employees to complete 181 hours of required training during the workday while being paid in full. We're also recognizing, congratulations to you all. And we're also recognizing Anthony Bronco as borough manager, manager for Fountain Hill. He has secured millions of dollars of grants for the borough and made many necessary improvements to municipal operations. These upgrades include enhancement to a public works facility, vehicle upgrades for the fire department, security measures in the borough office, and the reconstruction of a major roadway. Congratulations all. This year's award for promoting community and economic revitalization is shared by three recipients. Created in 2017, the Tri-County Land Bank is a leader in Allegheny County Region's initiative to address blight and revitalize communities. The Tri-County Land Bank transfers vacant and abandoned properties to productive use through this innovative process that leverages intergovernmental cooperation across sector partners. The TCLB uses its powers as a land bank to support affordable housing development, home ownership, lead mitigation, and other community goals. The creation of the TCLB and its process for transforming blighted properties into community assets significantly improves the health, safety, and economic vitality in the communities of its 29 members. Congratulations. And then the city of Clarendon. New investment through the state-supported neighborhood partnership program and private public nonprofit partners provided an opportunity for Clarion, for Clariton to take a crucial step towards long-term stability. The Clariton Inn is a mixed-use redevelopment at the primary intersection of Clariton's central business district. Redevelopment of the site was a priority of the mayor and city leadership that the residents, nonprofit partners, and community leaders were excited to make a reality. Strategically revitalizing the key Main Street block on the corner of Miller and St. Clair will create critically needed affordable housing and opportunities for new and established businesses, including potentially a new home for the Clarendon Public Library. Strategic demol demolition of other blighted structures in the block will make way for a newly constructed residential commercial mixed use building. This development positions Clarendon for resurgence at its location in the heart of the central business district and walking distance to a wide variety of amenities. And finally, in promoting community and economic revitalization, the city of Aliquippa. Population exodus over the years combined with high unemployment has contributed to one of the highest poverty rates and highest percentage of abandoned dilapidated structures for a community in the Commonwealth. 
That is until Dwan Walker became the first African-American in the city's 204 year existence to be elected mayor. As Dwan took his seat, his brother Donald joined him as a member of city council. They rolled up their sleeves and got to work. The mayor's slogan rang, rang true for staff and citizens alike, all hands on deck. His passion for one Aliquippa and seeing that the city is heard has allowed the brothers to accomplish much of what they set out to do and building the foundation to complete the city's transformation through their hard work and promotion of community and economic revitalization. Mayor Walker and Councilman Walker have been the driving force for attacking the city's problems and fostering a solid economic future. I wanna congratulate Mayor and Councilman Walker for receiving the award. I wanna tell them both they once we can travel again and I can be in Aliquippa, you guys owe me a hug. And anybody that knows Dwan knows he can give really, really good bear hugs. So congratulations, guys. Kim? It took a crisis the size of COVID to make us truly understand the importance of community health and wellness. Our awardees for the Health and Wellness Awards showed keen leadership in their communities and they deserve recognition. Mohammed Nurul Hassan, Council Vice President of Milburn Borough and General Secretary of the Bangladesh Society of Pennsylvania for two years, provided assistance to his community throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. During periods of high case count over the past year, Hassan responded to his community's need for assistance through providing food items, medicine, and other provisions for those self-isolating during the pandemic. The Community Mediation Eviction Diversion, CMED program of Northampton County prevented a wave of homelessness during the fight against COVID-19. The CMED program is a collaboration of county departments, nonprofit organizations, and the local court system working together to assist eligible households in need and their landlords. Through the CMED program, Northampton County and its partners have been able to satisfy overdue rent payments, enabling over 400 households to remain in their homes while assisting landlords, thereby mitigating evictions and reducing the burden on the local court system. The housing stability afforded by the CMED program has contributed to the overall health and well being of the community, reducing the burden on local health care providers and facilities while reducing COVID 19 spread and resulting deaths. Congratulations. The winner for Innovative Planning Sand, Sound Land Use Practices Award is the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission, Future LV. And the regional for the regional plan is a roadmap for guiding Lehigh and Northampton counties through 2045 and beyond. Future LV is the first plan for the Lehigh Valley and among the few in the nation to link comprehensive planning to transportation infrastructure funding, enabling the region to put for the force of two and a half billion long range transportation plan behind its land use recommendations. It is the first in the region to give public unlimited online translatable and ADA access to documents and an interactive website with all the GIS maps and data that went into the plan. Through a unique partnership with the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, this regional, regional tools value is evident as our economy continues to deal with COVID across the Lehigh Valley region. Today's partners across the public and private sectors can make better data-driven decisions. Congratulations. And working together is always key to success. And it gives me great pleasure to award and to congratulate the recipients of the Intergovernmental Cooperation Award. The COVID-19 Regional Code Enforcement Partnership purpose is to inform, enforce, and report. Working with Senator Yudishag, the Lower South Valley Council of, Count of Governments and the Mountain Council of Governments built regional inspection teams 
from their member communities that coordinated random inspections of businesses in the region's industrial parks. At the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was no federal or state inspection plan in place to ensure area industrial parks in Luzerne County were adhering to COVID-19 safety guidelines. The COVID-19 Regional Code Enforcement Partnership informed companies they must implement COVID-19 safety guidelines. These guidelines in turn were used to assist enforcement of all municipal code violations at company facilities, and then they were, to, they were able to report COVID-19 violations as well. Great work by all. And a special note, on behalf of the Governor's Center for Local Government Services and the entire Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development team, led by Secretary Dennis Davin, we extend our deepest condolences to all who have been impacted by the recent passing of Mr. Dan Guidish. Dan served as the head of the Mountain Council of Governments in Luzerne County. And Dan was also a member of our very own state tax equalization board, of which members of our team worked closely with. We are very appreciative of Dan's years of public service and again, extend our condolences to all. Rick? Today's award for information technology goes to the town of McCandless. Kim Zachary led McCandless Communications overall which added new channels of information sharing and increased the depth and breadth of sharing information. New channels included town website enhancements, a new town Facebook page, new town YouTube channel, new savvy citizen cell phone texting app, and upcoming launch of both a town Twitter account and a town te television channel. By increasing participation in the information about the detailed mechanics of government, Recruitment of participants on citizen boards increased as well. Congratulations. Right. Now, it gives me great pleasure to recognize individual local government leaders who have been selected by our partner organizations, their commitment to share in public service and their exemplary work ethic strengthens their communities and improves the lives of the citizens of Pennsylvania. They are making a difference. First up is the Pennsylvania State Township Association of Township Supervisors, or PSETS. Today recognizes Township Supervisor Kathy Rader. Kathy has served on and led many volunteer boards for the association and is a member of the PSATS Executive Board, where she serves as Vice Chair. Kathy has attended and helped to plan numerous PSATS conferences. She is the Assistant Director of Community Development and has served as the Assistant Zoning and Code Enforcement Officer, Clerical Circuit Secretary for Planning, Zoning, Permits and Inspections, member of the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission, Board Member of Western Lehigh Chamber of Commerce, and the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. She is a, currently a member of the Governor's Local Advisory Committee and has been a member and volunteer emergency medical technician with Centroni Ambulance Corporations. Congratulations, Kathy. The Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs recognizes Tom Gramling. Tom has dedicated much of his life to serving our country and his community as a public servant a remarkable volunteer and an active duty military member. He has been a resident of Westmont Borough in Cambria County for the past 40 years and served our country in the United States Navy for 28 years, with five years of active duty and 23 years in the Navy Ready Reserves. Tom has been serving on the Westmont Borough Council for the past 22 years and is a member of the West Hills Regional Police Commission and PA One Call. Tom has always been very active in promoting the Cambria County Boroughs Association and serves on the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs Board of Directors. Tom's dedication and commitment to civic did not go unnoticed as he was elected statewide by his colleagues to the Office of Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs second vice president in 2017. He was sworn in as president in 2019 
He is a strong promoter of strategic statewide learning initiatives that allow greater virtual access to Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs trainings and opportunities. Congratulations. Congratulations. The next up, the PA Association of Township Commissioners recognizes Nate Silcox for his 25 years of experience in public policy at the state and local levels. He currently serves as the Executive Director of the PA Senate Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee. As a Hampton Township Commissioner, Nate founded oh. and chaired the Veterans Recognition Committee. The committee led efforts to complete the Hampton Township Veterans Park and Memorial. Nate also established an annual Hampton Commissioner's Breakfast with business leaders and the Hampton Township Community Shred Day. The Planning Commission, which is completing its first comprehensive plan since 1994, has been lauded by, the Cumberland, uh, by Cumberland County as one of the area's best. Nate is also very involved in both Central Region and so State Association of Township Commissioners. He currently serves as the president of the State Association of Township Commissioners. Congratulations, Nate. The Pennsylvania Municipal League today recognizes Denise Sirachi, the mayor of the city of Lancaster. Mayor Sirachi has elected, was elected first vice president of the Pennsylvania Municipal League in October 2020. Over the course of the last two years, she's been working to implement her strategic plan priorities which includes strong neighborhoods, safe streets, secure incomes, and sound government. These priorities have been advanced through the establishment of the first ever Office of Neighborhood Engagement and Love Your Block Initiative and adoption of a Municipal Climate Action Plan. Early in the pandemic, the city partnered with Lancaster County and Penn Medicine and received emergency approval from the State Department of Health to perform its own contact tracing. Additionally, the city's Office of Neighborhood Engagement established in 2018 under Mayor Sirachi's tenure has been instrumental in leading efforts to reach the city's very diverse population regarding COVID-19 through a network of relationships and initiatives that focus on multilingual communication contacts with stakeholder groups, and socially distanced community events. Congratulations, Mayor. The County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, or CCAP, recognizes Clinton County Commissioner Jeff Snyder. Jeff, Jeff has served since 2012 with a singular focus on the well-being of his constituents. In that time, he has served on 21 of the county's boards and authorities, as well as many regional boards, as he was instrumental in the renovation of the Piper Aircraft Building, which became the new home of county operations in 2018. Commissioner Snyder works tirelessly and unwaveringly advocate for county priorities. He rose to the challenge created by the pandemic, using his presidency to assure that counties had a voice and access to critical resources. He pushed for strong state county partnerships and has consistently built collaboration across the Commonwealth. He is one of my home county commissioners and he is a friend and I wanna congratulate my friend Jeff Snyder on his statewide award. Well earned, my friend. Kim? Awesome. Jean Miller is being recognized by the Pennsylvania Association of Council of Governments. Gene started his career in Oil City in appliance repair and has been a, both a successful local businessman and a committed public servant for nearly 40 years. He were, first ran for supervisor in 1974, was subsequently elected as constable for Pine Grove Township and then as a supervisor, a position he has held for 32 years where he serves as chairman of the board. As a volunteer, he has served as vice and now president of the Oral Region COG. And in the past, he's been president of the Pennsylvania COG. He has brought ideas on intergovernmental cooperation back from many conferences and implemented them. He is a member of the local township association, past vice chairman for the county housing authority, been a member of the local fire department for over 40 years, 
and done significant fundraising work for numerous charities. For all of his adult life, Gene has remained committed to serving his community. Congratulations, Gene. The Pennsylvania Chapter of the American Planning Association, or PAAPA, today honors Pete Wolfhurst. Pete began his career in planning and local government as the Pike County Planning Director in August of 1986 and continued in that role until February 1999. As County Planning Director, he oversaw the development of Pike County's first county comprehensive plan. Early on, Pete also became involved in the PA chapter of the American Planning Association and served on the Northeast Section Council. He has served as treasurer in the past and is currently the chair. In February 1999, Pete took a position with Penn State Extension in Pike County as the Community Development Extension Educator and continues to work with Penn State Extension to this day. He conducts land use planning programs on zoning, subdivision, and land development and comprehensive planning for local municipal planners. He also has also conducted educational programs for on Pennsylvania local government and to date over 1,000 people have attended the workshops. Since 2006, Pete has served on the Shohola Township Planning Commission, where he led the way to write, rewrite both the township zoning and Seldo ordinances. Congratulations. The Pennsylvania Municipal Authorities Association recognizes Dwight Hoare. Dwight was, has been the manager of the St. Mary's Area Water Authority in Elk County since 2002. He is the immediate past director of Region 7 for the Pennsylvania Municipal Authorities Association. He also serves on the Pennsylvania Municipal Authorities Association Conference Committee, Executive Committee, Water Subcommittee, Nominating Committee, Organization, the Organizational Development Committee, and the Program Advisory Committee. Dwight's work advising on the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection requirements on strengthening earthen dams has formed the basis for estimating the design rainfall amounts for all dams in the large portion of the Northeastern United States. In addition, the study resulted in, in the creation of the department's probable maximum participation. Study and evaluation tool for which Dwight is acknowledged. That's a lot, Dwight. Congratulations to you very and for a well-deserved award. And this past year has been challenging and demanding especially for Pennsylvania local governments and their leaders. And there's nothing like being a local elected leader or appointed. Through your own resilience, tenacity, commitment, attitude, and inspiration, you safeguarded and protected your communities and constituents. For that, we thank you. It's been a joy working with all of you. And again, congratulations, one and all. Rick? I know I'm a nerd and I know I get to work with a lot of local government nerds. Um, I'm sure many of you watch Jeopardy at night when you have the opportunity and have seen recently stand in MCs for the Jeopardy program and you realize how difficult it is to do things like this. Um, and if, I've, if Kim or I have mispronounced the name or stumbled, please take that with a grain of understanding that this isn't what we do all the time and that it is difficult. And I wanna thank our um, marketing staff for the technical support today, Amy Zecca and Ashley Parcells and with Secretary Dennis Davin, Governor Tom Wolf. I want to thank all of the award winners for what you do every day to make Pennsylvania a better place to live, work, and play. You are making a difference, and thank you for your service, and thank you for attending today.